YouTube, it has arrived. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to remove an unknown BIOS password in Windows 10. Da da da! Anyways, there's a few things I wanna make clear because there seems to be a lot of confusion in the last videos, which are how to remove unknown BIOS password um, in Windows XP, and then how to remove it in Vista 7, 8, and 8.1. So a few things to clear up are, you, you need to have a 32-bit operating system. This program was written in a 32-bit 32, 32 operating system, which means it's only compatible with 32 bits. If you have a 64-bit computer, which I know a lot of the comments are suggesting, I can't help you. I'm really sorry, but it's for 32 only. Now, the way you can check which, which architecture your operating system is, or I guess your computer, it's not your operating system, if we do start and then type in control panel, it'll be the first option there. If you, so usually yours will be in category view. I always work in icon view because it gives you more detailed options rather than just a general category like security or user control stuff. So what you can do is up in the top corner here, you'll see category, large icons, small icons. And I'm assuming you're using Windows 10 because that, that's what this video is based on. Anyways, so you'll have these three options. Yours will probably be category. So go down and select small icons or lar large icons if you really need, doesn't really matter. So small icons is what I use. Then if we go along here and find system, you can then see along the top there, you'll have your Windows edition. So I'm using Windows 10 Pro. And then you'll see under the system category there, you'll see processor, installed memory, and then system type. Now this is where you'll find that. So mine is 32-bit operating system, 64 base processor. So actually, I have a 64-bit base processor instead of uh, 32, which will appear, you'll see commonly, instead of 32, it'll actually be 86. That's just what they chose, doesn't really matter. But anyways, so this, this part here is what you can use to figure out what your architecture is. So anyways, now that you know that, you can either go ahead and retry removing the password using uh, CMOS PWD and just follow the same steps that you took in either the XP version or the Vista 7, 8, and 8.1. Um, the Vista 7 8, 8.1 is the one I recommend because it'll show you on a more up-to-date system. Um, but if not, I mean, you, if you have XP, then follow the XP one, plain and simple. Anyways, moving on here. So the next thing we need to talk about is start system call fun start system call failed. Anyways, so that is probably as a result of 64-bit OS um, because the program can't run in it. If you have that error, again, just try running it right from the start and hopefully it won't happen again. The other thing to try is completely remove CMOS PWD from, your, from wherever you stored it. Completely remove it and then re-download it and reinstall it because sometimes there could be a corrupt file within or the odd time you will find if your computer is out of date, like you don't update it very often, that can also prevent it from working because it'll be more like corrupt instructions, to put it simply. So these being the case, unfortunately, there is no easy fix for Windows 10 because as they tear down the operating system and rebuild it, Microsoft has the habit of taking something that works and moving it somewhere else where you wouldn't think it would be. For example, removing the start menu. Who the frig would remove the start button? Just don't do it, that's what you're known for. Ugh. Anyways, so this being the case, we're gonna look at some of the options we do have. So, again, you can Google, 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 and Google. I just did see most password removal programs and lots of options came up. So I just scroll through and maybe there'll be one that works for you, you never know. But anyways, I'm gonna go through the ones I found just so you have a bit of a database to go through and you have some, some things to try at the least. So here's what we have. Our first one is helpdeskgeek.com. 
how to recover BIOS CMOS password using CMOS PWD, but it's not just CMOS PWD. Um, what we have here is a is instructions on how to remove it using CMOS PWD. Um, the unfortunate thing here is if you're like me and you have a Toshiba, which is the main one I use, you'll notice that, so it's going to tell you to go to the directory, so C slash or wherever it is, CMOS PWD, and then go to the Windows directory and run, go back to command prompt and run um, CMOS PWD underscore win dot exe. And that's going to bring up this that you see here. However, if you're like me with Toshiba, and you actually you can see it here too, not all the um, not all the manufacturers have a password beside it, which is this binary code. Um, so if it's not there, we're kind of shit out of luck, you know. So it's worth a try if you have, I guess, a Ward 4.5. Um, mainly awards and IBM PS2. Um, it might be worth looking at this again. I'll link all these in in the description so that you can easily access them. Our next tool here is OnlineTechTips.com/cool-websites-reset-bios-password. Um, Pretty much they're saying, yeah, they know it's a bunch, they're very, very pesky little things that no one likes to deal with. So, what we can do here is we scroll down and you'll find some useful information. So there's a BIOS bas password backdoor. Um, so if you have this error code here, like if you're, when you're trying to get in and it says whatever, system denied, system disabled and then you get this error code you can actually plug that into a database and it will generate a password you can try. Um, you can remove the CMOS battery but if it's on a laptop you don't have that because it stores it in TP, no not TPM, EEPROM. Um, jumper again that's desktop. Now if you do have a desktop and you're watching this um, you can remove the CMOS battery. Please please make sure your computer is powered off, everything's unplugged, and you've held the power button for at least 15 seconds to drain any remaining power in the capacitors, because that'll give you a nice little shock if you don't. So if you do that, then you can locate the battery, it looks like that, and again, I'll link it so you have a reference, and you just flick it out, leave it out for 10 to 15 seconds, put it back in, restart it, and it should reset the password. Same with the jumper, you'll locate a jumper, it usually says CLR CMOS or CLR CLTRC or CL something something. And you just move it over for 15 seconds to the other jumper and then you move it back and it'll reset. Um, sometimes manufacturers, that's, this is method four now, sometimes manufacturers will make a default password so it's almost like a master password that gets generated. So that in the case like this, where you forget the password, you can actually go to their manufacturer's website and recover it. Like get the master password and get in through the back door, we'll call it. Um, and our method five is what I've been demonstrating, which is CMOS PWD, but it's not working in Windows 10 because we ran into a programming conflict, we'll call it. So this is a definitely a good one to check out. It's got some great options, but if like me, they're not gonna work because it just didn't work. I don't have a desktop and we don't get an error code on Toshiba. It's just, it just doesn't work. So now we have uh, community.sony.com, um, how, to, how to reset an unknown BIOS password. So, again, this is for Sony. I just stumbled upon it and thought I'd include it. Um, and it goes over a lot of the things I talked about from the previous tab. Again, these will all be linked, so don't worry. You can go through them at your own leisure. You can use the jumpers, um, lost password, um, uh, CMOS battery. And then this is one that I wanted to really highlight. So. As you can see here, we have a few commands that we can try in the command prompt. Again, 
I've been fiddling with this for about a year now and I've had absolutely no luck. So, this might work for you though. So if you go to the command prompt and you're gonna see these. Debug and that's in, below it is an O and then a space and then 70 space 2E. So if you go to the command prompt and you run debug and then hit enter, then type the next line, enter, then the next line, enter, quit, enter, and then reset. Sometimes that'll remove it because it's going through the, um, uh, what's it called there? It's just, it's going, it's taking the path the BIOS password would use and it goes to it and it will try to erase it. And then we have CMOS PWD again, and then backdoor BIOS passwords. Um, if you, you can go through here and locate your uh, BIOS manufacturer, and sometimes these passwords will work. These are backdoor passwords that might work on the given manufacturer. If not, we're going to move on. And last, but, oh no, we do have one more after this. We're gonna move on to Major Geeks, which I trust, it's trusted in the computer world, like 100% safe. Um, all techies go here. Um, and actually you'll notice if you're thinking of getting into the field in college, this is the site that all your professors will tell you to go to when downloading programs, for example, in a hardware class. Like if you have to run a tool to update the BIOS or um, like a shadow copy kind of thing, anyways. So Major Geek is very, very trusted. So anyways, um, I came across these programs. I tried every single one, and a lot of them aren't compatible with Windows 10. Some are, but they don't do anything. It'll just, it won't, because of course, again, Microsoft chose to move things around in Windows 10. Um, they're not accessing the right areas of the hard drive and forwarding to the BIOS chip. So, it's not working. But again, if you're if you're really needing it, it's worth a try. It won't harm your computer, um, and they're quick and easy to use. And then last but not least, um, I came across this final one, which I think is also worth mentioning. Um, it's gonna have it's gonna have some information about gen generic backdoor passwords. Um, and then if you can boot into Windows, here's another little program that's worth trying. I didn't have luck on it on Toshiba, but HP might, you know, Dell uses different hardware, so it's all, you know, it's all worth a try, just it doesn't work on Toshiba, and I tried multiple versions, actually, and I tried Acer too, and I didn't have any luck with that. So what you can do here is download this program called CMOS Deanimator. It's completely safe, don't worry, just use, I recommend this link to avoid any conflict. And it's going to say it's going to have warnings, but you just want to proceed. It'll, it'll walk you through it. There's also a text document. And um, if you can't boot, it's going to come back with it's going to come back to the system disabled. If you have that code, you can plug it into this gen generator website. Um, and then it's got CMOS PWD. So again, unfortunately, I don't have good news for you as far as Windows 10 goes. But those are a few things you can try. Um, it's definitely worth looking into. It doesn't cost you anything and they're very... They're not complicated and very easy to go through, and there's always text documentation and resources online that you can follow. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, don't forget you can leave a comment down below. Um, if you're new around here, don't forget to smash that subscribe button, and don't forget to give the video a like, as your feedback is very helpful. And until next time, we'll see you later.